shared traditional territories of the Sabretooth, Katsi, Musqueam, and Squamish First Nations. We thank the people who continue to live on these lands and care for them. And uh, we also just brief announcements. Um, our next meeting is, is not that far away, uh, February 7th. It'll be on a Tuesday night this uh, in February. And our monthly meeting again will be with Zoom. And the topic will be rain gardens uh, for salmon. And the presenter is Deborah Jones. And I also hope to do a show and share later in February um, in the memory of Frank Nick. So that'll be later in February. And I now turn it over to Victoria to introduce our guest presenter. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Ian. So, um, well, tonight, you know, we're going to be seeing probably a few uh, charts and graphs. And I thought I'd start off by showing you actually a really important graph that I prepared uh, just before the meeting began. I'm going to do some screen sharing here. What this, uh, can you guys see that? I've yep. got so many admits and everything here. I can't. We can, you, we're, we can see it. At least I you can, can. You can see it. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll just go. So what this graph it shows you is the yearly Christmas bird count wrap ups or summaries presented by John Reynolds over the years. And this is just data. It's not the complete data set. It's only between 2008 and 2022. So our most recent count. We actually have observations extending way back in this direction, um, back to 1995, 1998, um, but they're very similar to the years 2008 and 2009. So what you can see from this graph is that John started presenting to us in 2010, and he's been presenting every year, not missing a single year since then. So I think that's pretty impressive, and we're mm -hmm. extremely grateful to you, John, for this tradition. No pressure, but you know it's quite an important BMM tradition. So um, for those of you that don't know John, he's a research scientist. He's a really keen birder and photographer. He's a top contributor to iNaturalist, and he's a longtime member of the Burke Mountain Naturalist, just to name mm -hmm. a few of his accomplishments. So please join me in welcoming John Reynolds. And I'm going to stop the screen share here so that John can take the reins. So okay. thank you, John, for thank being you. here. Thank you, Victor. I wish I had data sets that showed such consistency. It's you know, remarkable. In my, in my job, you know, I wouldn't have to <laughs> be using statistics and things. So uh, uh, yeah, you're gonna see some graphs folks today that do not look a whole lot like that. Um, but thank you, thanks very much. And I, you know, I loved, I love doing this and uh, and I, I should be really clear to everybody. I think you, you know that um, I only, I did help organize the counts for a few years, but Victoria uh, does everything. Okay, and uh, except the talk, yeah. and even the talk is facilitated by the graphs that Victoria prepares. So I really appreciate that. So I'll go ahead and uh, share one of my screens. What am I going to share now? Let's see if I get this one right. I'll try that one. Um, if I go full screen, I just want to see what happens here. Does that work? Victoria, do you yep, see that, that looks good. my presentation full screen? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, yes. So here are the acknowledgements right at the start. Um, uh, Victoria does do everything, including the graphs and so on. And I also wanted to mention uh, Jennifer Taze, who is the compiler of the overall count. So we do it as two, we run it each side of the, the Pitt River every year. And Jennifer is the well, compiler that puts all of it together and runs the well, other side well, of the of the pit. And uh, as I said, my task then it There's doesn't. A, Make me with a whole lot to do. <clears throat> um, okay. Is that a buffle? So let's uh, go. If um, and I'll just mention, uh, remind you that the width of the the circle is twenty four kilometers. That the Christmas counts have been happening um, for about one hundred and twenty years now. Um, and uh, there are about an average of about 2,400 of these Christmas counts that happen each year in the week before or after Christmas. And there are uh, most of them are in North America. And, and this this circle is centered on pit meadows. And if you use some imagination and creativity with the definition of a circle, it manages to go over and just touch into Moody Inlet, which is helpful because it's the only salt water that we have in the circle. 
So um, that's kind of fortunate. But as I said, we we in the in the Burke Mountain Naturalists run everything on the left side here of the pit, and then on the right hand side is the um, um, is run by Jennifer Tays and her group. And just as a heads up, by the way, they are interested in uh, getting more participants on their side. And uh, I haven't discussed this with Victoria and the team yet, but uh, we could see about whether we can help to drum up more support for the uh, for the east side as well. So I'll cut to the chase. We uh, here is the um, graph of the number of species that we've had over time, and this starts uh, from the time when the count was sort of up to full number of people in 1998. It goes back longer than that, and you can see that the last uh, four years have not been our best. Um, they've been low, and they were low again this year. And the odd, I always have a reason. I can always come up with an excuse. Oh, the weather was terrible. It was snowy, it was rainy, COVID. I mean, lots of good reasons to get a low count. Most of those don't apply this year. And in fact, we had, um, let's see here, we had the uh, typical number of observers. So we were back up to full strength, 73 observers. And last year we had 54. Now there were a couple of areas that weren't covered. Minicotta uh, was not done this year because uh, some of the trails are closed or they're still cleaning up after the fire. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. Um, weather I can't see as having been a problem. Uh, we did have a big cold snap, but that they should that shouldn't really drive it. And so I'm not sure why the numbers are are down a little bit. And if you though, if you look at the number of birds seen here, the number of individual birds, you can see those numbers are down too. So overall, fewer birds seen uh, than usual over the last 15 years. And uh, and yeah, that's actually quite quite low for the overall average you can see the average is over 10,000 and we had um, more like 8,000 this year so um, yeah um, it's it's interesting just to ask how these things vary and you know nobody's ever done the statistics on it we could test for weather effects or observer effects and things like that but the thing I wanted to jump to is the area comparison to ask how the different teams did relative to one another. Uh, I think it, those of you who've been doing this for a while know that De Beauville always wins, so there's never much contest there, except Poco Riverfront gave them a run for their money this year. And Poco Riverfront, I just uh, killed it this year. 45 species. I think it may be the first time they've been number one. Uh, De Beauville put in a I mean, I would be, love to get 43 species in my area. It's still a very high count, and you can see that overall there was a it was pretty tight for some of our top areas, Moody Inlet, the Colony Farm areas, and so on. Uh, but Poco, so I do have a theory about this, and and I'm, I might um, try to see what the theory, what people think of it. One theory I have is that this year, you may recall that last year it was very snowy and wintry, and uh, the leader, Ian. Uh, went AWOL. He went skating on, on uh, Trout Lake when he should have been doing a bird count. And of course, the numbers, you know, were not really there. He shows up this year. And of course, see, this just shows what happens when your leader focuses on the task at hand. So uh, kudos to <laughs> Ian. But actually, if I can, and seriously, though, Ian, if I can just, um, if you want to unmute for a sec, do you want to just, how did this day go down? How did, I know you got some good species, and I'll show some of those. But it seems like you didn't miss much. Well, just to mention, it was actually Como Lake that I was skating on it, and I was counting birds while I was skating and playing hockey. So, oh, okay, those are important. That's not, true. Not quite Como to Lake, the, yes, okay. <laughs> not quite to the numbers that you counted when you did a marathon, but I, I counted a few birds. So, <laughs> fair um, enough. I, I, I would say we, you know, we got lucky, of course, with some some um, species that we don't see that often come through. Um, but we, we also had a an additional uh, really good birder on our on our uh, day that we hadn't mm -hmm. had before. So mm -hmm. uh, Greg Greg was on our on our trip and and he he had a scope and that which always helps with uh, oh, yeah. with getting some further away birds. Right. Well, congratulations. It's a, because that's a that's a really good accomplishment. That's that's just terrific. So um, one of the things I always like to do is compare the different sides of Colony Farm, west side versus east side. Uh, because the habitats are pretty darn similar, um, as you can imagine. And uh, this is what's happened over, over time. It used to be that east side uh, would get about 10 more species than the west side for some reason. But since about 2008, they've 
been neck and neck and just pretty much in lockstep ever since. And that was certainly true again this year where the numbers were basically indistinguishable. So this uh, trend is continuing where both sides are doing, uh, getting very similar number of species year after year. And we depend on, um, of course, Colony Farm for a number of species that are very difficult to get in other places because they have this very rare old field habitat, which uh, is not common in Greater Vancouver. Um, and so what I'd like to do is then I want to take a poll and I'll see if I can make this work. I guess I need to come off full screen here. Um, do I need to stop sharing to make this work, uh, Victoria? I might. Yeah, I think uh, oh, you're mute, uh, Victoria. But I think Your I mic can... is on, Victoria. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, I can I can do it for you, John. Here, if you let... want to get back to screen sharing, I guess, or I'll just pull up the. Uh, wait a can second. You, if you can do the the poll, that would be fine because yeah. I see my test is still showing for me. But if you want to do poll one, are you able to? Yeah. Can okay. anybody see the poll? Maybe we have to screen share. Uh, I have to unscreen share in order to see the options of putting it up here. Uh, let me just, can anyone uh... see the poll right now? No. No. Not yet. no. no. And, and anybody that's a co-host or host, they, they can't see the poll. Um, hey, Brian, can you, do you want to try doing the poll as the host? Here. Let's see if this works. Can you see that this one now? Yeah, there's a poll, poll one up. Right. Poll one is you up there. See it. Yeah. I can't see it. Because you're, no, because I'm a co-host. Hey, yeah, I, I just saw it and I just um, did the first one. Yeah, the votes are coming in. Um, so that you can see the, the question was, what was the most commonly observed species? And uh, oh, we've got crow and oh, it's 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 a toss up here. It's like watching a horse race. Yeah. So, um, Crow's uh, leading as far as I can see. Uh, yeah. And so we've got about 60% uh, of you have voted. Feel free to um, I'll just give it another second or two for people to vote. We're, so the get the question is, what was the most commonly observed species? Okay, so I uh, see so a few more coming in. You still don't see it, eh, Victoria? I do now, oh, and okay. I think I'm actually running it because I see end poll. Do you have that? I, I've got it. I've got end poll as well. Yep. Okay, we all do then. So okay, do John, I. I'll let you give it a try, John. Okay, I'm going to try to um, end yeah. the poll. We've got 76 participation rate, um, and uh, and so the yeah, you can see that if we had 50% of you went with crow, followed by mallard, starling. And I'm, oh, did I share the results yet? No. Shared the results. Or... There, can you see the results now? Yes. Okay, yep. so those are the results. Crow, followed by Mallard, Starling, Goose. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing that. I think I'm putting that away. And, uh, just click the back. X on the, just click the X. You want, I Do think I can. See it? If somebody can kill the poll, that would be great. I closed it. I don't know if Done. I closed it for other people. Okay. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, let me just uh, show you what the real results are. The result is yeah. Mallard. Mallard won. Oh. And in fact, so people actually got it quite wrong. Um, so, John, you have to start screen sharing again here. Okay. Here How's we go. That? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mallard. Yeah. Mallard actually won. Um, Goose second, Crow third. So, Crow was not number one, which is, I think, the number one choice. Now, this is interesting because, you know, crows do that big migration. I think if we, you know, in the in the afternoons to BCIT area, I suppose if some, all it would take be one group still be out there at five o'clock and they could probably see a thousand crows go over. So, um, and Canada goose, we depend on Moody Inlet very much for those. And they they spend the night on Moody Inlet, and then they take a lot of them will leave for, in the morning. So the Moody Inlet people typically do a quick goose count before they start to have a, a little conversation among themselves, and they all talk to each other, and then groups of them start peeling off and heading inland to feed. So yes, it was mallard, and um, and then Canada goose and crow. Okay, um, Anna's hummingbirds. I wanted to show you the trends in Anna's hummingbirds. Uh, we all know the spectacular rise of wintering Anna's hummingbirds. Lots of people have feeders. I, I know I spent, <laughs> I had three different feeders that I was alternating through that really big cold snap, trying to keep them, always make sure there was one out for them that wasn't frozen. Uh, I was 
um, I'm pleased to see the Anna's seem to have gotten through that challenge. I think they weren't successful everywhere, but the Anna's are doing fine, uh, is the bottom line, despite that really incredible uh, cold snap. One thing I noticed when we had that, that snap, um, you know, Anna's hummingbirds get through the night by going into torpor. So it's sort of like hibernation almost, where their heart rate slows right down, their whole metabolism, so they're saving energy. And I think that mine, the ones that were coming to my feeder, were probably going into torpor intermittently during the day as well, when it was really, really cold, because it didn't come to the feeder that often. And when it did, it would stay for a long time. So I think it was actually perhaps budgeting its energy that way. I don't know. That's just a, just a theory. Woodpeckers. This is a, one of, another one of the graphs that, that um, Victoria kindly made. I just wanted to mention how the flickers are um, number one, and they fluctuate a great deal, interestingly, uh, and they are still number one. And then after that, the, the rest are sort of, well, we've got uh, in purple, we've got downy woodpeckers, the next most common. You probably would have predicted that. And the others um, are uh, not common. We just don't get that many of them. Uh, it's always nice to get any of the other three, the pileated, red-breasted sapsucker, or hairy woodpecker. Stellar's jays are one that um, are interesting. You know, I had been, I had noticed, we've noticed in previous years that there's this fluctuating trend downward in, in Stellar's jays. Although actually, if you look at the graph, I'm actually now starting to see two phases. I'm seeing since about 2008, the numbers have fluctuated around an average number. They're not really continuing to have an apparent decline. But Victoria pointed out that if you look on the other side of the pit um, river, that they, there's less of an indication of a decline and low numbers even, even in the earlier period. So I don't think we should read too much into this. And that's one reason why we have so many different Christmas counts that scientists can average out the results over a larger area. Um, but I do, it does make me think something has happened in the first half of our time series here. I don't know if anybody has if anybody has any thoughts on any of these things. Um, you know, feel free to unmute or or uh, or let me know. Um, and now I wanted to start going through area by area um, the different uh, some highlights from each of the areas. And I I want to start with uh, June Lucier's amazing photo from Moody Inlet. Uh, you can see we've got the usual killdeers that are winter there every year. Uh, surrounded by friends that come in some years and not other years. And these are the long-billed dowagers. So the, the long-billed dowagers are well-named. And these are birds that um, summer they breed in mostly Alaska and uh, western northern Canada. So some in, in western North, Northwest Territories and, um, and Yukon. And then they come down here and many of them will go further south. But we do have a wintering populations. The best places to see them in Greater Vancouver are... <coughs> Excuse me. Are um, Moody Inlet in some years, and um, Burnaby Lake at Piper Spit and Rifle Refuge. So terrific photo and uh, terrific find. Um, I don't think we ever have any other team that ever gets uh, this particular species. So that's certainly nice. <coughs> Pardon me. It's hard to mute while I'm on the screen share. <coughs> Did I just uh, take it off full screen? Yes, you did. <coughs> okay. Um, you, you stopped screen sharing. Okay. Hang on. That's quite a cough if it can compress uh, computer <laughs> keys. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That's got it. Okay, back in business. Okay, um, so some other highlights. We had the barn owls that we always hope we'll see in Colony Farm, but great news. And then Colony Farm West had shoveler and shrike. And if we're gonna ever going to get a shrike, we kind of expect that it's going to be one of the Colony Farm teams that are going to get it. It's a, a bird that winters here. They terrorize other birds. It's a predator. And... Um, it's um yeah it's always a great day when you find a shrike so that was certainly nice to see and then uh, i also wanted to mention uh this the towns in solitaire that um greg Fer ferguson photographed and that was in the um in the riverfront uh group and along the pit um we had um this is a bird there have been quite a few hanging around this winter um but a tough bird to find and always a good day when you see a towns in solitaire so 
That's nice. And this group also got the only Merlin of the day. So um, good news on that front. The, these photos, that is, is not from the group. These are, I just took these off the web just to put a face to the name. De Beauville had a, a, ver had a, a hermit thrush, another good bird. We miss it. Most years we don't get any. Uh, if you ever get a hermit thrush, it's it's certainly great. And um, you might be surprised to see purple finch here. I, I don't know if I've ever had to talk about purple finches because we take them for granted. Um, but actually, they're, um, it turned out these were the only ones. Uh, De Beauville got the only ones on the count. Uh, and so I'll bet the De Beauville people never imagined when they wrote down Purple finch, that they'd be getting the only ones on the count. It's just not a very finchy year, I guess, um, because uh, most of the finches did not show up in any kinds of numbers. Um, there are no red crossbills around right now, for example. <clears throat> so um, great, great to see a couple of unique species from that group. Moody Inlet had the only white crowned sparrow. Now, they are a lot less common than golden crowns, so... Uh, it is a bird one could miss on the, uh, for the entire circle, and but uh, Moody Inlet came through with that. And I wanted to mention this in Widgeon. So this was my area. Um, before I did the count, when I called um, a local resident, uh, Bob Edward, who, who sort of hosts our visit up there, um, he mentioned that he'd seen 111 in one place. And I couldn't believe that because that's about twice as many as we ever get in, in that area. Uh, I mean, I didn't disbelieve him. I just thought that's amazing. And so we did our best to estimate how many we were seeing along the pit. And it's really hard because they fly around a lot. And in fact, there's a risk that they're going to get picked up by other teams, you know, further down the river. Um, overall, we came up with a figure of 110 individuals, it, which is exactly what Bob had told us he had seen. We estimated 110. And I actually said to the gang at the time, I said, well, this is not a bird you'd expect to vary in numbers much they would winter they've, they've got they're going to be very sight faithful in the winter when they come down from the arctic <clears throat> to winter here and that made me think i'll bet they're all here and that the other groups down the pit um like de beauville and so on uh won't get very many and sure enough they didn't there was only one other trumpeter on the count and that was actually in colony farm which is a surprise uh and so i think what we had was that this case where all of the pit rivers Birds were probably all together with us, and uh, and and that gave us a count of 110, which is twice what we normally get. Um, Colin, I saw your hand up briefly. Did you still want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to mention the fact that for the first time in my 10 years of doing Colony Farm West, we had a trumpeter swan swimming in the river. So mm -hmm. we were quite delighted to see that on, a, <laughs> on an otherwise slow day. Yeah, that's a really surprising bird. Um, the only one I, I think I've seen one over by the sort of the um, Coquitlam uh, area on the north north side there, but I've never had one in Colony Farm proper. So that's a, yeah, that's a great bird for there. And it, you know, I'll bet you didn't, you didn't think you'd see more trumpeter swans than De Beauville <laughs> slew would see. Uh, so yeah, interesting. <clears throat> okay, so those are some, some of the highlights. And uh, that brings me though to my next poll. And uh, again, this is a bit of a, can somebody, can I, one of the, Somebody else run the poll so I don't have to stop my screen share. I'm going to do it. Okay. Can, I, can everybody see it? Uh, not e not I see his poll it, too. It, no, it, I don't it's have real like slide. <clears throat> hey, Brian, do you want to try doing it? I will. I will try. I can see the screen, but not the question. Okay. Poll two. Here we are. Can everybody see poll two? Yep. All we see is just says poll two. There's no 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 no, uh, no tech. If I stop the share, will that help? Uh, maybe. Let me, no one. Let me do it. it. Do you want to try again now? Yeah, I've I've put it up. Can anyone see a no, poll on the screen? Okay. No. Well, I will start again. Can anyone see a poll now? No. no. Okay. I'm going to try. Uh, let me just try one. Okay. Yes. There we go. Okay. It seems to work for me for some reason. Yeah. <clears throat> so what species did the intrepid explorers at Widgeon Marsh 
uh, get that no other team got. I we get so little chance to boast. I'm I'm milking this for all it's worth, folks. <laughs> so, what was the species that uh, uh, that we got up in um, Widgeon Marsh that nobody else got? Rob uh, Butler is on the on this uh, call. He doesn't even know this yet um, that we got a unique <laughs> a unique species. I was surprised when I saw the results compiled by Victoria on this. So crane, <laughs> no goose, hairy woodpecker. We've got a couple of vote three votes for ivory build. <clears throat> yeah, I did my best to keep that a secret, but I like your attitude. Whoever thinks that's what we saw. So uh, we've got. There's still time to vote. It's. Um, Rob Butler, I'll be interested to guess what you're guessing. But I guess you're going to probably know the answer because you know we saw an ivory billed woodpecker. There's a fourth vote for it. Uh, they've only been, ex well, they're only sort of extinct. Okay, I'm going to end that. Oh, we've got 81% per percent, uh, participation, and uh, there are the results. So we've got neck and neck between Snow Goose, Sandhill, Crane, and then uh, Harry Woodpecker and Ivory Build. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and put that away. Share my screen. See if I'm getting any better at this. Can I close the poll? Yes. Um, okay, and you should be back to a slide that just says poll two on it. That's correct. Okay, and then the result. Whoa, where's my result? I'll tell you the result. It's Harry Woodpecker. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, we got a hairy woodpecker. I mean, I never imagined <clears throat> when we heard a hairy woodpecker that that would be the only one on the entire Christmas count. Yeah. Um, uh, unbelievable. So, yeah, we that was not your guess. That was a third place guess. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny how these Christmas counts go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to move on now. And and now it's time to look at some photos. So this is the, this is the photo contest uh, phase of things, and uh, we have four categories as usual: birds, people, scenes, and stuff. And best fake. Honestly, this has been the most fun um, edition that I've been involved with with this with this roundup. People are really uh, in the first year or two. Victoria will remember, and some of you others will. You know, we got maybe a handful of people sent in slides, but now everybody has a phone or a digital camera, and people are really rising to the occasion. So uh, we're going to go through these in different, in category by category, and we'll have a, I'm going to run through them, going to show you each one first, then I'll show you a summary of them, and we're going to vote uh, based on uh, loudness of cheering. So prepare to unmute thyselves, uh, but not yet. <clears throat> Birds, okay. Um, by the way, a shout out, as always, to Paul Steves, who uh, you'll notice there was best fake category. That was inspired by this uh famous photo you know i never get tired of looking at this photo um it just it, i like they're all looking it's as if all three people are looking through the telescope at once but anyway <laughs> i digress okay well here we go so this was sent in by um jolene bonham uh our famous feeder watcher photographer um i got nothing this is what she sent me don't know where the i suspect these would be her photos she takes great photos she um uh, yes, complete with um, uh, a bit of with commentary. So there's one. Uh, we've got John Saremba's um, hooded merganser, um, uh, a uh, beautiful male. Here's another merganser. This is a common merganser, a female. The females are more colorful than we give them credit for with that bright red bill uh, pushing up against the stream by Tracy Anderson. Don't worry, I'll recap them. Um, you can just enjoy the photos for the moment. Um, a feather perfect song sparrow and uh, nicely framed by the, the twigs that are around it, again by, by Tracy Anderson. This is a different photo by uh, June from the one that I showed you. This is just focusing on the long billed dowagers at um, Shoreline Park. If those birds are, I'm sorry, at, uh, yeah, Shoreline Park on Moody Inlet, if those. I don't know if the birds are still around. They probably are, and um, it makes me want to go and see them because uh, these are terrific, terrific animals. So there's that one. Then Hillary McGuire um, got a crippling shot of a towns in solitaire during count week. So that counts um, in the Christmas counts. Things seen during the count week that are not otherwise seen uh, can be submitted for as such as being in the count week. And we did get a solitaire in the end, but this photo certainly qualifies for 
um, us to enjoy. Um, <clears throat> Chris and Evelyn Thompson, eye to eye with a bush tit. Bush tits, as you know, don't like to stand around for very long. Uh, they're always on the move, and here they are exchanging meaningful glances, eyeball to lens. And another one from uh, Jolene, uh, kind of weird photo of the black cap chickadee um, um, being overlooked by a, a very gaudy male purple finch. Uh, and she then also uh, sent us this one. Uh, that's a great emoji to go with it. Um, here's a, um, a, a very uh, rude view of a flicker, including showing us the reasons why it's called red shafted flicker here. So those are the photos for the birds, okay? This is the bird contest. I'm going to recap them now for you. I'm going to do them two slides. So just to remember uh, which is which. So I'm going to show them to you first. Don't vote yet. Just here's, you're going to see these four. So keep these in mind. And you, we've got these four to keep in mind. Can you keep all of those in your mind? If, you, if you're ready to go, I'm going to go back. So this is a group. And this we're going to do one omnibus vote. So out of the eight that you've just seen, I want to hear um, uh, thunderous applause that was so loud that I don't even have to have my um, microphone turned on to hear you. So if you want to go ahead and unmute, um, I'm just going to call out the birds one at a time. So go ahead and unmute. Don't say anything rude because you're, 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 your mics are hot now. And, uh, and I'm going to call them out. So I'm going to start on the top corner with uh, Hooded Merganser. Yes. Yes. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, we're just warming up. I can tell. Uh, we, we may have to do this again, Brian. I'm just thinking. Um, <laughs> Common Braganzer, the one on the right. Yep. Yay. Okay. Uh, and a song sparrow. Woo! Yay. 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 And the long billed dowagers. Yep. Yay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it sounds so creepy, you guys. Um, <laughs> okay. Town. Oops. Sorry. Go back. Go back. Uh, what happened? Towns in solitaire. Woo! Yeah. Wow, Hillary. I didn't know you could do so many different voices at once. Um, <laughs> uh, Bush tip. <clears throat> Okay. It's cute. <laughs> it is cute. Uh, and uh, we've got the, the chickadee and uh, and its friend, the finch. Yay. And a flicker butt. Yes, yes and Brian likes that one. I'm seeing I'm seeing a huge amount of enthusiasm. Very, very creative. I like that. Okay, so look, gang, I I think I got an answer. I think I heard that the Dowagers win. Does that sound right? I think so. Yeah. 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 I think I think so. So um, I don't know if, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if June is on the call or if she wants to say anything about how she got the shot. I, I, no need to say anything if you don't want to. I haven't noticed whether June June's is June's in Manning, Manning Park this weekend, so she oh, doesn't okay. have the facility to watch. Of course, no problem. Well, please... Uh, do thank her for us and tell, him, tell her about the enthusiasm. She's probably too busy looking at uh, spruce grouses right now to be uh, concerned right now about this. But uh, anyway, that was a great, a great one. Normally, when we were doing this in person, this is the one reason, that perhaps the only reason why not meeting in person um, is a shame. Because when we used to meet, I always you know, had the pleasure of handing over a big, nice craft beer to the winner and, <laughs> in a church which worked well for me. And I remember the time that the person wasn't there to receive it, and I cracked it open right beside the altar and, um, and uh, enjoyed it myself. And I was told later that that was perhaps not quite appropriate. but Because by then, by no then the... drinking, no, no food inside. or beverages inside the well, church. Okay, I mean, we could debate what communion wine is, but um, we'll... <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll, um, it, the beer was down my throat before I had a chance to be chastised. So good enough. Um, so that's the bird contest. Now let's do um, uh, let's do people. Um, uh, and so a lot of people remember to take great photos of their teams. I forgot to do that. To be honest, we had so much rain in Wigeon Slough all day that it was okay. it just totally mm. forgot about that. But we've got some great photos here. Uh, and so here's one from by Mark Simpson. Look at their backdrop. There's the um, elusive white crowned sparrow juvenile there, in fact, um, which, of which we only had one in the entire count. So there's that one. Um, this one by um, Wayne McCallum. Uh, I guess this is Colony Farm. 
um, on the dikes. Notice everybody's looking in different directions. I love these actors. <laughs> One of the few unstaged people shots, right? I love it. And uh, of course, it's probably not really pointing at a bird, but anyway. Uh, and then uh, Laura DuPont uh, sent this one in of the team looking happy. And and now this is this is a, I'm going to put these together as a trio. What I'm going to ask you right now: What do these three photos have in common? Pointing. Pointing. Look at that. I mean, this is a team that is really seriously going for it. And there's mm -hmm. multitasking going on here. In the top left, we have, we're have we pointing, and it looks like a, a phone or other device in, in her hand. And the, mm -hmm. I'll bet that's the bird list tucked under her arm. And, uh, and look down here. They're all pointing in different directions. Now, that's a little <laughs> suspicious. But anyway, I'm going to offer these to you as a, as a composite uh, on behalf of Laura uh, DuPont for her team. Um, for the pointers. Okay. Um, then we have this kind of interesting oh. one by Paul Steves. It turns out Paul's not only good at photographing uh, wildlife. Now, I got to ask you all straight out while you're unmuted. Does this remind you of any album cover? Yeah. <laughs> the Beatles. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The Beatles. The Beatles. The Beatles. The Beatles. <laughs> I thought so too. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was a great photo. <laughs> Uh, and this one, um, I was confusing at first. So this is uh, the gang at um, Moody Inlet by um, Edie Kernigan. And um, is that, that's Pamela, isn't it? Holding up the sign? It yeah. is, yes. And so I was trying to read the sign, but fortunately we have a, an ACE team uh, of um, forensic <laughs> photo uh, analyzers uh, working for us here in the VMN. And so we were able to blow it up and see, uh, read that oh. sign. And there it is. <laughs> I just thought that was so sweet of her. And, uh, so clever. Yeah, and, yeah. I really, really thought it was. I was touched. Really, I was. So there's that one. And then there's this one, which is somebody's got to have to explain to me. Talk to what, me, people. What is Sigrid doing? Looking for a contact lens. Okay. No, no. Looking for salmon. Sigrid is not looking for salmon. She's looking for a thernstone or a pigeon. Oh, and right. The and the tide yeah. was so high that day that there was very little room between the pier and the uh, uh, where I could walk. Uh, oh, so that's, that's great. Stones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrific. So that's at the pier at um, yeah at Shoreline Rocky Park po over Rocky, Rocky Point. Uh, yeah. I couldn't. Yes. Now that you mentioned, I understand, and that is exactly what you should be doing. That's our only chance of black <laughs> turnstone on the entire Christmas count. Anyway, that's great dedication. Love it. Um, and uh, and I think that brings us to our short list. So here they are. Really, it's it's. Um, uh, oh, and actually, no, I've got two two composites. So first of all, the ones you've seen already. So um, um, we've got one here, got two, and then this is these all go together. So there's three. Okay, you have to think about that before we call a vote. And then over here, we had the Abbey Road photo, um, <laughs> the um, love letter to John photo, and uh, the um, black turnstone photo. So I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to ask for uh, voting, please. So, uh, top left of the gang with all their binocs. Yay! 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 Well, there's, oh. that was that was a big team. So they're uh, I'm, they're I'm all thinking, just voting for themselves. And I'm thinking they're all they're all here. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we have this um, the Moody um, uh, Colony Farm photo. Yay! Yay! Yay. Okay, and then we've got the Pointer Sisters on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, next time, I'd like you to do it with more, you know, in verse. But anyway, um, um, and then over here, we've got the We're Abbey so Road. Excited. Yes, and you just yeah. can't hide it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was Abbey Road. Uh, we've got the, uh, the inlet photo with Pamela and the sign. Yay! Yay! Yes! Yes! <laughs> and the contact lens turnstone. Yay! 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 Okay. Um, I'm lost. Tricky. Um, this one. Victoria, Abby. did you do we um, need to do a runoff? Well, I, I, I know which one I want, so I can just tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, 
Should we do a runoff? No, I think Abby I think Road is in the running. I think yeah. so too. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. and what was the what was the most popular one on this set? There was one. Was there the one Pointer on Pointer Sisters? I think the Pointer Sisters. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna first of all start with the Pointer Sisters. Oh. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm, yeah. yeah, okay, we got it. Um, and Abby Road. All right. Congrats to Paul Steves and team. Uh, and um, yeah, someday I want to be able to join that team. Uh, they they look like they have a great day out. Okay. Uh, congrats. That's that's terrific. Now, um, oh, we have another poll. I keep forgetting about these polls. So I'm going to just do it, okay? Okay. Hang on here. Um, polls. Stop sharing. Well, John's getting the poll ready. I didn't see Abbey Road. I saw the fisherman on the boat on one floor over the cuckoo's nest when he introduces all the oh. inmates as doctor this and doctor that and doctor the next guy oh. do you remember that ragtag that's what i thought right okay. if oh, i were man. better at multitasking i'd i'd be on google right now to show that one to you but mm -hmm. uh yeah cool so can you it looks like people are voting so i think that means this is working what mm -hmm. mammal species am i about to show you <laughs> Hmm. You've got bobcat, black bear, cougar, and masked shrew. Oh, it said mammal? Oh, I messed it up. Mammal. Oh. oh well. <laughs> well, bigger ones without the wings. Okay, we're at 81%. Can we get it to 85? Anybody else want to jump? Oh, yeah. Oh, one more. Oh, yes. We just blew right past the record. We are definitely getting better at this, folks. I'm going to... Uh, okay, I think we'll go... So what's this? Bobcat shrew cougar bear right bobcat mm -hmm. shrew cougar True. bear and yep. the poll share the results you see it there right bobcat yeah. shrew cougar bear i'm gonna stop sharing get out of this i'm gonna share my screen okay to close the poll yes please do yeah it's funny i uh yeah thanks for that and the answer is Oh, black bear. Black bear. Oh. oh, so are Al or Audrey here? Are any? Do you want to unmute and say anything about this if they're here or no? I don't think they're here. Okay, so do you know anything about this, Victoria? Has anybody heard about the story here? Because uh, that was taken from their car. Because there was another photo standing, and I think I could see the side mirror. Yeah, uh, all they said is that these. These, bear, these bears shouldn't be playing right now. They were mm. just you know, the, the surprise of seeing them. That's all they said. Yeah, amazing. It looks like a mum and two yearlings is my guess. And it actually looks like the one in the middle is making a snowman. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, very surprising. Uh, imagine the cold that they've been through um, previously if they were up for the two weeks when it was really chilly. So, yes, isn't that interesting? That was your fourth place uh, guests on the poll so yeah okay let's move on now to scenes and stuff um i'm jumping right in john saremba um with oh. a, a a photo of uh now this was i've forgotten which you're in colony farm west side i think john is that right he's he's east east okay um, um, oh it is oh i see just yes when you just the on the left left bank yeah yeah, okay. So, um, yes, all right. So, there's that one. And what else have we got here? Um, moving. Why isn't my slide advancing? Ah, now this one takes some time. So, bear with me. I, I put it in here because I didn't know what to do with it. A photo by Greg Ferguson. You can see we're at the corner of Shaughnessy and whatever. What's that? The corner of by Colony Farm, right? On the corner of Shaughnessy and Mary Hill Bypass. Mary Hill Bypass, right. And, and, um, I'm going to start on this, but I'm going to defer to uh, Ian because you were there or Greg, if you want to say something. So the good news is we have an arrow pointing out something that has been circled. OK, so uh, you got to this takes some patience. OK, then you go to the next photo and a much more helpful photograph. It's apparently <laughs> over here. You can see the arrow again. Now, this is as far as Greg was able to get us. I got to wonder about how this team got 45 species, to be honest. Anyway, well. 
teamwork is the answer oh. <laughs> so it took it took ian to sort of bring us home and uh and uh came up with it is that about the way this worked is that how it went down that's you saw this thing and greg's the one that saw it and yeah. i and i thought that is probably the oddest place i've ever seen a kingfisher so i i he said well go up and take a photo so i went across one of the lanes and and um, got to serve as close as i could to it i was about whatever four or five traffic lanes away from it and um, was able to get the photo that's fantastic it's so bizarre yeah. uh, i've never seen one in a place like that either i can't imagine what it was doing you know kingfishers in other parts of the world there are many species will eat um insects and lizards and mammals and all kinds of things right um i just wonder if they if they uh sometimes are branching out a little but yeah that's really weird so um that is it for the for the scenes and stuff you have two choices you have <clears throat> uh john's photo of uh colony farm or we have the trio here that add up to one kingfisher from three photos <laughs> gave so him some mm -hmm. gave him some this is a hard one yes not, uh, not for yes. me it's not yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not voting for myself <laughs> well, why not i mean i certainly would vote for myself anyway um okay so we have um John's, I'm not going to bias this in any way. We have this beautiful, amazing color palette. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did I say that out loud? Okay. So we have the, we've got Colony Farm. Let's uh, take, let's have a cheer for that one. Yay! And uh, Bizarre Kingfisher. Cheer for that one. Yay! That's good. You can't okay. vote for both of them. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that being the case, I'm going to have to hand this one to Colony Farm and John Saremba. Congratulations, Woo! John. That's a great photo. Yeah. But and yeah. but really, kudos to to the team for getting the shot of this kingfisher. Do that's mm, great. Sorry. Okay, that's and then um, <clears throat> now the the category we all love. This is our last category, folks. Yeah. Um, best fakes. Um, <laughs> okay. You know the thing about Paul's photos is it you know you have to take a second look just to be sure that it's fake of course i don't know what is that paul by the way what what's the uh, bobcat that's a bobcat yeah on the back of a bobcat really oh i thought it was some exotic thing you'd seen in africa or something i really neat okay so um that's one uh that we have to choose from <laughs> <laughs> One more. Uh, the only way you can tell this is perhaps fake is that the mallard on the right doesn't seem to be terribly concerned. Um, <clears throat> and then there's this one. Oh. Um, now, this Daddy. one is interesting because Paul is a sneaky guy. And I was thinking that this he's drawing our eye to obviously to the cat. But that must mean there's a second fake in this one. And I was thinking, well, maybe it's Paul because how could he you know take the photo and be in the photo um but if that's a fake paul you deserve you know you should be working for the cia or something because i mean that's a pretty elaborate effort it, but anyway this is what i got uh i'm just gonna leave it there well maybe i'll ask paul is there another surprise in this photo that i'm not seeing i don't know just the jaguar yeah. just the, okay so i see he's really playing head games with me now after all these years <laughs> he, he's got me spending far too long looking at his photos <laughs> and then uh <clears throat> this one i don't think this is a fake necessarily and he heichel pointed out that the situation here is that they were backlit and so they had to put it down as penguin spur for the uh for the list rather than being able to get it to species so we have a penguin uh which is always good and then finally you have to look hard to spot this one <coughs> oh i wish we could get an evening grow speak on the count and uh so that's our last one by chris and evelyn thompson oh and there is another one sorry oh that's <laughs> nice. so i have to ask um the moody inlet folks um did you plant that or it was it does it just live there that the it's at the hatchery it's okay. in the little wetland in, yeah, out okay. behind the hatchery. Great. Well, good. Yeah. No, we, we found it. You're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I, I wasn't implying that it's not real. I just wondered how, you know, what the story was there. He winters, he winters, he winters no there. No post-production. Yes, winters there, clearly. So I'm going to show you two okay. um, sets of uh, three photos. Um, oh, very good. So just to reiterate what they are before we vote, remember you've got those three and we've got these three. Right. Okay, got it. So, uh, first of all, uh, Bobcat from behind. Yay! Yay! All right. 
Gator. Yay! Uh, nice kitty cat. Yay! Yay! Okay. Um, penguin swim. Yay! Yeah. Oh. And the evening grow speak. Yay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. And pink flamingo. Yay. Oh, you're not making this easy. This, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Okay. Um, uh, I think that the winner is on this page. Yes. People agree with that? Yes. yes. And I'm going to do a quick runoff. Okay, we'll do it in reverse order. Yeah. Uh, big, big Kitty by the Lagoons sign. Yes! yes. Oh, okay, the alligator. Yay! And the bobcat from behind. Yay! Okay, well that didn't win. Um, I think it's it, is it the gator. Um, I think so. Victorian yeah. team of yeah. panel of judges. Yeah. I think the gator wins. Yeah. That is a terrific it's... shot. I was just in Florida, uh, saw lots of them. Uh, never that well. Certainly not photographed that well. So, uh, congrats, Paul. Um, on the. Actually, I mean this. You you invented the category and you're still at the top of your game here. Yeah, that's actually, so, a female. So I'm going to regret this. Uh, we're going to take a, just a very uh, brief interlude. Let's see if that works. Oh, remember that? <laughs> Funky music. Like it. No, 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 no. <laughs> we got to okay, get away, all right? That. <laughs> back to the show. All right. Um, back to work, people. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, how do I get rid of that now? I knew I was going to regret the trying key, that. Man. Are you still seeing the um... interlude? You're seeing interlude. Okay, let's go to full screen and see if this works. Slideshow. Okay. All right. Um, now we have the worst miss award. Um, if you remember, this is what this is the oh, no. award for oh, the. No. Okay. The, the bird that uh, one team misses that everybody else gets, okay? So this is meant to um, celebrate failure and um, to uh, try to embarrass and shame the people who missed something. So I won't go through the... I don't want to dwell on the fact that Victoria did, in fact, win the inaugural award um, that Victoria won, which Victoria and her team won yeah. for not seeing a, a glaucus wing gull. We've had some others that we don't want to dwell on, including oh, yeah. John. Just skip over this one. Yeah, we'll yeah, skip sure. over that John. one. I know. That would be, uh -huh. you know, we've missed Black Cap Chickadee twice in the Widgeon Marsh um, uh, over the years. So uh, then there was the upper, I don't know if people, can, oh. some of the people remember this. Uh, some of these are my graduate students. And they didn't get a mallard, and they didn't get any waterfowl at all, in fact. And they said they didn't know there was water in the area they'd been assigned to. And apparently the fact that it's called Upper Coquitlam River did not, uh, you know, tweak them. Bail them, this bail them. Yeah, and then we had Riverview, which missed an eagle one year. <clears throat> um, we've been, we, the award hasn't been given out every year. Um, oh. But I will tell you that this year's winner is... Eagle Ridge, because they are the only group that did not see a mallard. So, oh, yay! so yay to them. Congratulations. <laughs> and um, we will be running uh, remedial workshops after this um, <laughs> identification so that we can make sure that this uh, does not happen again. But well done, team uh, Eagle Ridge. And now we're going to, um, <clears throat> we're just about there. We're going to do the dreaded ID challenge. In fact, this is the last short segment uh, every year. As you know, I... I save my worst photos and um, of each year and just for you uh, so that I can show them to you and see if you can tell what they are. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to uh, quickly give you four or five of my worst photos of the year. Um, for example, <laughs> what's that? Call Henry it the species. Henry the goose. Gadwall. I heard Gadwall. Who said Gadwall? Larry. Oh, Larry. Larry, Larry. thank God oh. you're here. I need your support, buddy. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, Larry knows a gadwall when he sees oh, one. Okay, wow. so they, that, that these are going to always be the same bird, just a moment, split second uh, different. Uh, so there's a nice male gadwall with the, yeah. <clears throat> you know, gray and the white and the wing and a, and a black butt. Okay, how about that one? <laughs> 
the, the backside of something. <laughs> uh, yep. Chloe? Dark and Junko. Chloe, Junko. Oh, good. I love it when people are all over the place. Any other? Anybody want to throw something oh. out? What oh, color is it? What color is it underneath? Brown. Yeah, brown. Pretty yeah. yellowy. Robin. Uh, what have Robin? you Brown. Robin would Goldfish? Be no, I haven't heard the answer yet. You have not got it yet. Oh, okay. And Sparrow. Sparrow? Is it no. a hawk? Very, very thrush. thrush. No, but I can certainly Robin? see why you thought very thrush. This is going to surprise you. What it's a nut hatch. Nut hatch. Oh, nut nut hatch. Wow. Isn't that surprising? Oh, I yeah. honestly, I wouldn't have gotten that one either. Um, <clears throat> but it was this nut hatch. Just moments after I took the photo, it uh, took off and gave you that view. How about that one? Not a nut hatch. <laughs> Not a nut hatch. Excellent. We're get, we're making progress tonight. <laughs> we're learning. Yes. No. This is going really well. Oh, come on, folks. Somebody want to give? Anybody want to try it? I'll give you a hint. Cormorant. Um, no. Oh, it's a swan. Swan, no. A coot, not a coot, no. No, because they. I'll give you. A, do you want a hint? Wood. It's a, it's a piper spit. Wood duck. Wood duck. Crane. <clears throat> um, oh, it, it's a wood duck. Wow. It's, wood duck. it's from the wood duck capital of British Columbia. Beautiful. Hello. It's got little claws on its for, <clears throat> on the trees. So. It does. Yeah, they're quite prominent, aren't they? When you look at it. Yeah. Yes. How about this one? Pintail. 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 Larry Cowan, I need you. Not, Not a pintail. Not a pintail. <laughs> Larry, Larry's Long -tailed good at this. Duck. Yeah. Long tailed duck. Long tailed duck. Do you ask me whether it was on freshwater or saltwater? Oh. Is it freshwater or saltwater? It's saltwater. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Larry. Saltwater. <laughs> Long tail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that makes it that leans you toward long tail duck, right? Um, um, so yeah. this <clears throat> this was from uh, White Rock Pier, um, one of the best places to see them. Usually they're further offshore than this. Uh, pintail is just We've about always uh, freshwater. Um, how about this? Sure. I don't know what they were. Synchronized swimming here. Mm. That one bird or one? Buffalo head. It's. <laughs> Head. I'm hearing buffalo head. That's a yeah. good possibility. Any other suggestions? Green neck duck. Scott. Green neck duck. Golden eyes. Yeah. I think you're you're there. It's ring neck duck. Oh. I think what you're seeing, you you see how it has the white the character, the white um mm. the thumb that comes up at the front. I think that's what you're seeing on the bird on the right here. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. It's in the water. Yeah. So that's, that's right. Um, now, mm, yeah. how about this? <clears throat> what? Frog? Yeah, what? <laughs> frog? Frog. 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 frog jump. Yeah. Yes. It's oh, a, uh, oh. an, it's, um, yeah, poison arrow, uh, you know, one of these uh, dark frogs uh, from Costa Rica, where I went in February. Mm -hmm. Couldn't resist throwing that in. And this is the last one. Last thing of the evening. In fact, uh, any takers? There is a bird of the gull. Guano. Gull. Cormorant. Cormorant. Hey, I might yeah. be asking you about the lichen, but I'm not. Okay, oh. gull, <laughs> cormorant, yeah, it is a bird. How about now? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> there. Okay. Uh, there is a lighter blue so square. Oh. A heron. You can, you can see a bit of your bird now, folks. A green heron. Green heron, I'm hearing. Green heron. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's none of those. <laughs> How about now? Oh. Stork. Green wing. It was taken in um, oh. Vancouver. Sandhill crane. Nope. No. 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 Oh, nice. Oh, I'm. That's interesting. You're having. Okay. Starling. Looks like a starling. Starling. Oh, I'm hearing starling. Oh. Strong yeah. voice coming oh. through. Yeah. Oh. That's amazing. Yeah. One of the most nice. beautiful birds in winter that we have, in my opinion. So yes, yeah, that was uh, a starling doing his thing, his throat singing that they do. A lot of the song they do, if you watch them, they they're hard to open their beak at all. They 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 they're doing it deep down in the, in their throat, and that folks is 
that. I want to thank everybody uh, who is involved, all the participants, of course, um, <clears throat> Victoria especially, who really does, it is a lot of time, it is a lot of work, and I really appreciate, Victoria, you um, bringing the teams together and getting us going, and uh, and Jennifer Taves, our counterpart on the other side of the Pitt River, and, and Jennifer, we will, I am keen to see if there are ways that we can uh, uh, support what you do as well uh, more, and I think, uh, and we're probably, Victoria, I don't know, but I'm guessing we can probably use more support on the organizational end maybe as Definitely. well on our side, right? Yeah, yeah so, for sure. So we'll keep that in mind for, for next year. It's, um, and, uh, you know, our leaders are so experienced that once you get the leaders going, then things tend to sort of fall in place. But it is certainly it would be nice to have more people involved in doing it. And uh, so, again, thank you very much to all the participants. And thanks, folks, for coming. And mm -hmm. with that, I will uh, stop sharing the screen and turn it back to the BMN VIPs. Thank you. <clears throat> fantastic, John. 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 Yes, yeah. thank you so much, John. Really that was great. My pleasure. Really, really good. Yeah, thanks very Thank much, you. John. Wonderful. Right. You bet. So, so did anybody have any questions for John? Or Victoria? No? All right. I have one. Okay. Is it possible to divide the count on different days either side of the river so more people could participate on both sides? Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, that would be a really sensible thing to do, Susan, but no. Um, the rules are that it is one count, and the count has to be done on mm -hmm. one day. Um, we're very unusual. I don't know of another Christmas count that is run this way, to be honest, where we, mm. we, we act sort of as if there are two counts. Um, it, it works for us, and there are many, many places uh, that do Christmas counts that would just love to have as many keen participants as we do. We're we're actually very lucky to have these big teams going out. Often you can be, you know, much, much few, fewer people. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we're, I think we are stuck with this. But um, if anybody has any thoughts on, um, Victoria, you or, or others on whether we want to shuffle things around or swap some areas among the two sides of the river, I don't know. Um, uh, I had a suggestion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know that the Langley Group does part of the, uh, Pit Meadows area, and they do account on a different day. So is it possible for us to move over to their area and just expand it a bit on their count day? Um, I'm going to answer that. They do their count for our circle on the same day as the rest of us. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. I thought that they, uh, because I was involved for the last couple of years in the Langley group count, I thought they all did it on the same day over there which is different than ours. Yeah, it might be different, but the area they do just for us, they do on the same day as us for our count circle. Okay. Yeah. And John, mm -hmm. just for your information, it wasn't an alligator, it's a South American caiman. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, I actually saw, so I just read the chat and I, I saw that, um, I saw you'd mentioned that in the chat. Um, mm. yeah. where was it, Paul? In the Pantanal. Okay, beautiful, mm. nice. Well, that's the um, I'm surprised it won then because really it should have been a gator, but that's okay. You can still keep <laughs> you can still keep the imaginary beer that goes with it. Yeah, keep, keep the prize, Paul. Keep the prize. <laughs> and just to let everybody know, there's been lots of um, th thanks coming in from, from people to Victoria and, and John, so yeah. big thank you to you guys. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. great, John. Thanks. Thanks. I have one question. Actually, did anyone see the comorants at Como Lake? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I saw the picture on Facebook. I just wanted to saw it live. <laughs> um. Yes, I saw it live. Saw them mm -hmm. live. Yeah. There was five on the log at one time. Went up to seven. Swimming beside. Seven. There were seven on the log. There were seven. Time. Yeah. Huh. How often do you normally get cormorants on the count on, on Como? Occasionally. Very yeah. occasionally. Okay. And they're, I guess it was. They're, they're there frequently on and off whenever mm. the lake is stocked. Hmm. <laughs> right. They follow the, the truck, I suppose. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen up to about 11, I think. Hmm. One time, there can hmm. be quite a few. Hmm. 
Okay, um, uh, Brian, do we have wildlife sightings tonight? Uh, we do not. Okay. So let's not go to wildlife sightings. Well, we could. We could still go to wildlife sightings. Um, Ask the crowd. Yeah, exactly. Open for them. I saw it, we saw a vermilion flycatcher down in Arizona over Christmas. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like it's spectacular. It is. Mm. I was down in Delta on the dike yesterday, some nice uh, shrike down there. Uh, there apparently is a one snowy owl hanging out down there. I didn't see it, but I gather it goes between there and the airport. So. Uh, there was a swan on Port Moody Inlet today. I'm seeing that on Twitter and Facebook. And I hesitate to try to identify it because I made a really major mistake identifying a swan in front of John before. So <laughs> anyway. Yeah, my neighbors told me about it, but it was kind of, it was about... It was just going to get dark. I wanted to go down and see it. I'm sure it'll still be there tomorrow. They said it was just all by itself and it's floating around with all the ducks. It's been there for quite a while, obviously, until about two. Mm. Um, there was four redheads in Alouette River. Too. Alouette River. Oh. They've been there for a while. Oh, that's a good bird. And uh, in fact, that and you, you got that on the count, right, um, Jennifer? Yes, we did. Somebody got yeah. it out in Pit Boulder. Right. Would that, would that be the first for the whole circle ever, do you think? No, I think we've had them before. I actually mm. had one, had two maybe 10 years ago or something, mm. but it's very rare. Yeah. yeah it's what good. bird was it? What, what was it? The redhead? Yeah, a type of duck um, that's common in the interior. Um, they breed in the interior. They're easy to More see if you go to the Okanagan out. and... and uh, further east but they don't we don't get them on uh much on the coast we had it once at lafarge lake but it wasn't on account mm. there's four right now on the Alouette river oh just just west of uh of mckechnie oh cool when i was at piper spit last saturday i met a man he said on youtube he's chronicled the uh the, the cycle of the baby sandhill crane from um babyhood to adulthood <laughs> on youtube carl mark is his name and and did they succeed this year did did the 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 young made it the young yeah oh great yeah i saw two pileated woodpeckers today male and female doing a bit of a courtship thing so oh great. got a photo i'll i'll try to send it for next time or send it in for the newsletter. I've got uh, an Australian wildlife sighting, but I'll I'll let it's actually up on YouTube and seen very recently. It was a, uh, a platypus, which are oh. rarely seen in uh, in the wild um, by mm -hmm. by most folk, but it was uh, caught in a, uh, a major flood in Hobart in Tasmania and uh, this person was happened to be walking past and saw it was trying to escape the, the flooding water. So I'll just post the link into the chat and uh, people can view it at their leisure if they wish. Um, it's there. I, if, if, if I try and if I try and share it, it'll probably go wrong or jittery and you won't get the full effect. So, yeah. Just view it at Thanks, your leisure. Brian. Welcome. Anybody else? Just curious, does anybody see the bobcat on the count? We had one, I got my first bobcat ever on October 16th down at Colony Farm, right in the middle of the path. But I'm wondering if anybody has actually seen any around uh, the Tri-Cities area um, in the last month or so. We saw one at Burnaby Lake about three weeks ago. Oh, good. Anything, anything in the, like closer in the Tri-Cities? Well, we have, um, Colin, we have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a few videos of the bobcats. There's, we have 
they're pretty regular around Noons Creek around the shoreline trail. Oh, is that and right? usually, yeah, and usually I get the, when I see a whole bunch of crows up in the tree and they're not too high up and they're sort of down, halfway down the tree and they're looking down. So yeah. then I, I just go to where the crows are moving. I set and I get my video camera set on my phone. And sure enough, I usually get a bobcat oh, yeah. running by. And John, you you had the bobcat in uh, Belcara Park. Yes, in the um, yeah up behind my house. Um, there's a it's a well Belcara Mountain, the little mountain um, in Belcara Regional Park. Um, we had bobcat and cougar in uh, in the same six week period on a trail cam. Wow! Which was, uh, nice to finally get a cougar after trying for a long time to get one. Uh, it was at night. It wasn't a great photo, but. Uh, the sequence did did work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never seen a cougar, but during the during the wildfire at Minicata, there was a lady that showed up. Long story short, and she's got some she's got some property right next to the northeast corner of Minicata Park, and she says every year she gets cougar, at least one cougar wandering through her property. So I didn't realize they were that close that frequently, but uh, yeah, they got about seven acres there. They've had it for about twenty years, and and uh but i haven't i've never seen a cougar either when did you I, see yours, john john how long ago did you see yours john oh well so it was on the trail cam it was in um mid-october um mm -hmm. roughly something like that so i mean i've been trying off and on for years to you know to to see one on our camera so uh <laughs> that's uh it was f nice to finally get one, but they're so they're not common. It's just kind of generally understood that they're here, yeah, and we're just not mm -hmm. seeing them much. Mm -hmm. Actually, a, a new sign just went up at the north end of uh, Blue Mountain Street, uh, saying a, a cougar was sighted. Where where was that? Uh, the the north end of Blue Mountain Street. It it leads into the Chines, down into Port Moody, and oh. I I hike that area, you know, quite often, and I've I've never seen a cougar in the wild. Um, but, um, but just recently, like in the last week, a, a sign went up saying that, uh, you know, for people to be aware that there was a cougar spotted. So, is so that, they're, they're, they're certainly around. Is that the south mm. side of Burrard Inlet then, or? Uh, yes. Okay. Or of Port Moody Inlet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just above, um, Port Moody High School. Mm. Yeah. I'd love to see one. Yeah. I'm sure many have seen us. Yeah. <laughs> Which reminds me, speaking of seeing us, I also got an Ian MacArthur on the same trail cam. <laughs> the, the same SD Bobcat, card. Bobcat, uh, Cougar, oh, yeah. and Ian. And Ian. They were all, on, they were all in, the, in the same uh, sequence. I can't remember. You, within, you were a few, within a week or two, right? Yeah, within a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. 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 That was absolutely classic. Like that. that, that <laughs> That's real wild life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So was the cougar right behind Ian? Or... <laughs> no, it's two weeks away. So yeah, two weeks apart. Oh, well, thought it was the same sequence going through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One was chasing the other. We're not sure who was chasing who. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the story off of um, near uh, McIntyre Creek, which is off a of quarry road. Um, this is probably going back 20 years ago. Um, Don Gillespie's son, John Gillespie, he was he was in that area and he had a couple of dogs. And um, all of a sudden the, the dogs came out of the bush and a cougar was chasing the two dogs. And they went back into the bush. And when the two, when they came back out, the, the dogs were now chasing the cougar. <laughs> so mm. having a little nice. bit of fun. Was that the area where you took us to the waterfall last year, Ian? Where, where we hiked up to the waterfall um, at, at, at uh, Widgeon? No, no, this is off Quarry Road. So on, if you know where the Swiss Gun Club is? Yeah. In that general area. Oh, okay. So before you get to the gate then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, they're around. Yeah. Yeah, that lady that owns the property just at the northeast corner of Minicata Park said they they were having a barbecue at the waterfront there. And uh, she said that about 10 meters away, they were all hanging around the the barbecue and this cougar just, just casually went sauntering by, <laughs> but didn't, wow. didn't come after them, but just, 
um, the way she said it, it was just amazing. It, it walked by just like a regular house cat, like it wasn't yeah. afraid of them and they weren't afraid of it. So they were around for sure. Yeah. Mm. Depends on the size. Mm. No, a friend of mine saw one on Westwood Plateau, just on crossing one of the roads. So they're, they're in urban areas too, so. All right, any other sightings? Okay, I think I'll just have a reminder about um, our next meeting will be on Tuesday, February 7th, and it will be uh, Rain Gardens for Salmon, um, and the presenter will be Deborah Jones. So once again, thanks very much to uh, John and Victoria for, for putting this together. I know it's a ton of work, uh, but it's always enjoyed by everybody. So thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a ton. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you very great, much. Great job, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks folks. Very John. Thanks for seeing executive. everybody. Okay, stay safe. Good night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if the executive wants to stick around, we can have a little chat.